Mitch McConnell has demonstrated when it comes to uh, jamming uh, Supreme Court justices uh, through the Congress, he can move with great alacrity when he wants to. Uh, and if he chooses not to, if he chooses to delay, or if some of those that were supporting uh, this challenge to the electors, this baseless challenge, uh, object to moving forward, then it's on them what this president may do between now and Inauguration Day. But I don't want that on my conscience. Joining us now, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California. He was a manager of the 2020 impeachment of Donald Trump and is again advocating for his impeachment and removal from office. Congressman Schiff was on the floor of the House when the mob tried to gain access last week. In light of what happened, what is the significance of this impeachment vote? Well, first of all, I don't hear anyone saying what Donald Trump did, did was not impeachable, that uh, somehow this conduct is compatible with holding office. Uh, and uh, and I also don't hear many people saying that they think it's safe to leave him there. Uh, this is the remedy that Congress has. Now, it's not ideal. Uh, it's not as swift uh, as I would like it to be. The best thing for the country would be for him to resign or for the vice president to, to find a backbone and invoke the 25th Amendment. But neither of those things seem likely. Uh, so we'll do what we have to do uh, to try to protect the country. And the significance is the founders understood there could be exigencies at any time during a presidency, including during the last two weeks. And the mechanism they provided is nimble enough to be used in this kind of an emergency. Congressman, we talked to your colleague Hakeem Jeffries just a few minutes ago on this show, and he said he's confident that the votes are there at this point to impeach President Trump, perhaps as early as tomorrow. Do you agree with him? I do. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, the only question at this point is how many Republicans will support uh, the impeachment and, and how many will continue to make excuses and equivocate uh, and, as they, they did uh, a year ago, um, come up with the rationalizations for why they won't uh, do their duty. Yeah, it's beyond rich to hear some Republicans now saying it's a time for unity and healing and not for impeachment. What do you view as the possibility here? Because one of the objectives we've heard from Democrats is to prevent Donald Trump from running for office again, from serving again as president, from serving in any federal position. Do you see that as likely? It gets through the House. A lot of people have said it's probably not going to clear the, the Senate with a conviction because you do need all those Republicans to get on board to get a two-thirds majority. And then it would go to a majority vote on the question of whether or not the president could serve again. How important is it to you that Donald Trump not serve again in this country? Well, it's very important, uh, but my my priority right now is taking whatever action we can to remove the, the current threat, the clear and present threat we face every day he's in office. Um, and so I, I think that's where our attention has to be focused. But if you look to the future and you ask, uh, just as we did indeed a year ago in, in some of those clips that you were playing from the last trial, um, can we be confident of history not repeating itself with Donald Trump? Uh, can we be confident that Four years from now, he won't be back lying about another election, claiming another election is about to be rigged or is rigged, uh, uh, and mounting another insurrection against the results of another election. And the, the long and the short of it is, of course, we cannot be confident of that, because this man's lack of character is not going to change. His basic immorality is not going to change. Uh, and so, yes, that does concern me. But my, my top priority right now is doing whatever we can do in our power in the House. Uh, and, and we have to hope that the Senate will do its job uh, to protect the country from the, the threat that exists today. So, Congressman, <clears throat> in protecting against the uh, threats that exist today, there obviously is concern about safety inside the Capitol. Uh, I, I want to ask you what you've learned so far uh, over the past week about what happened with the Capitol Hill police. Uh, a lot of fingers being pointed, a lot of people saying they warned the Capitol Hill police. The, the retired Capitol Hill police chief said that he didn't get the support that he needed from Senate leadership. Uh, others are saying, the NYPD even saying they warned the Capitol Hill police of the coming riots and insurrection. Uh, what can you tell us? Well, I wish I could give you a clear picture, but it is muddy for us in Congress as well. Uh, most of us are mystified by why uh, the Capitol Police were so uh, outnumbered, why this wasn't anticipated. Uh, it, it didn't really require, I think, 
extensive intelligence to see the, the potential uh, for danger here, given that the president was doing this rally. Uh, so we're mystified by it. Um, we're still trying to resolve uh, the situation with the National Guard and why they weren't brought in and why uh, the Capitol wasn't better prepared. Uh, you know, I have to say, uh, you know, it's distressing in so many ways because we see Capitol Police officers who were not doing their duty, uh, who have been suspended uh, because of that. But we see others like that footage you just showed of that police officer trapped in that door uh, fighting for his life and fighting for our lives. And, you know, those of us that, that have had security details because of the threats we've faced have gotten to know these Capitol Police officers uh, and just uh, how superb so many of them are and dedicated and devoted. And they feel they let us down. And it's really, it's heartbreaking. Uh, but we, we don't have, I think, any kind of clarity, uh, Joe, at this point. We're still trying to figure it out. So speaking of clarity, yesterday I talked about the torts test that, you know, our torts professors would give us at the beginning of uh, torts one and the but for test when you're talking about negligence, but for X, Y would not have happened. So if there's a car accident explaining to our viewers, you remove one person from the scene. And if by removing them from the scene, the accident wouldn't have happened, obviously that uh, points a finger towards where the negligence uh, uh, lays, lies in that and that car accident. In, in this insurrection, I'm wondering, uh, on the but for test, uh, who fits in that? I, we know Donald Trump does, but for Donald Trump, those crowds wouldn't have been there, guilty of insurrection, uh, uh, provoking people to in, commit insurrection against the U.S. government. But who else fits in there? Does Kevin McCarthy fit in there? Is he responsible? Uh, is Ted Cruz responsible? Is Josh Hawley responsible? Who who are, at the end of the day, responsible um, in a meaningful way for the insurrection against the United States? I think there is a lot of responsibility, Joe, as you point out, uh, that goes beyond the president, that goes to people in the Congress that were propagating the big lie that he's been trying to sell the country. Uh, I have nothing but contempt uh, at this point for Kevin McCarthy, uh, who carried the president's water throughout these four years. Uh, you know, he and Mick Mulvaney are in exactly the same place, which is claiming somehow that uh, they're they're newly discovering that Donald Trump is a different person than they thought, uh, apparently. Um, no, he's exactly the same person we knew he was uh, every day of his tenure. And Kevin McCarthy is worried about keeping his job right now. Kevin McCarthy is worried about money drying up right now. Otherwise, he would be out there pushing the Antifa lie along with the president. So uh, there are a lot of people who have some serious soul searching to do. Not that I expect that that will happen. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's hard to look at our colleagues uh, the same way because Kevin McCarthy uh, and 140 of his colleagues uh, after the failed insurrection were right back on the floor pushing the same big lies. Uh, and uh, uh, and it's just contemptible. Yeah. Uh, Congressman Adam Schiff, thank you. As always, we appreciate it.